Hi, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org, the uh, world's first free online medical school. We're going to talk about depression. This is a topic that's going to affect uh, probably anybody who goes into medical practice, regardless of what they're doing, because depression will have uh, a significant effect on, on basically any disease and any, uh, any specialty. So... Uh, as far as epidemiology is concerned, even uh, even the real Slim Shady also gets real depressed sometimes, as well as a long list of other famous people. And uh, this is a disease that affects around 17% of all Americans, and uh, only around 3% of Japanese people, which I don't know what the Japanese people are doing right, but I think we should try and look into that. So the criteria for diagnosis of depression are uh, are at least five of the following symptoms, and uh, one of them has to be a depressed mood or loss of interest or loss of pleasure in activities that used to be pleasurable. And the mnemonic that we often use is SIG E caps. So uh, S is for sleep. And this could be insomnia or hypersomnia, but it's usually going to be insomnia. We'll talk about what it might mean if it is hypersomnia. Uh, loss of interest in uh, most uh, activities that, that people used to find pleasurable. Guilt or worthlessness. Uh, low energy level. Um, loss of concentration. Loss of appetite. Um... Or it could be uh, it could be that you uh, gain weight as well, um, and uh, again we'll talk about what it might mean if it's a if it's a atypical presentation like that. And then psychomotor retardation or agitation. This is uh, often when people's bodies slow down; they kind of get uh, some physical effects of their depression. In some cases, they also can have uh, pain syndromes and things like that associated with depression. And uh, suicidality or thoughts about suicide or thoughts about death um, without a real thought about how to die, but, but thoughts about death are, are all signs of depression. So again, you have to have at least five of these for two weeks, and one of them has to be a depressed mood or loss of interest. So there's some different subtypes of uh, depression. These aren't necessarily going to affect the way you treat it too much, but it, but there may be some effect on the way you treat it. So the melancholic, melancholic depression, that's kind of like the depressed depressed people. Uh, they, they can't really be cheered up. So when when something good happens, they don't really uh, they don't really enjoy it. These people are also usually worse in the morning. Atypical is what I was alluding to with the reverse symptoms. So instead of uh, not eating, they end up eating a lot. Instead of not sleeping, they end up sleeping a lot. And a lot of these people are the ones, same ones that present with uh, somatic symptoms like uh, the psychomotor retardation or, or some of the pain, uh, pain problems as well. Uh, catatonia, just, uh, you know what catatonia means. It's when you, uh, when they... Uh, just don't do anything. Um, uh, they kind of, kind of just sit there with the vacant stares. Um, postpartum is after you have a baby. Seasonal affective disorder is just if you have uh, bouts of depression that pretty much only happen uh, in the darker months of the year. And then it, you can also have psychosis with depression. And uh, that will be differentiated from from some of the other uh, disorders with psychosis just by the fact that it doesn't meet criteria for schizophrenia or for schizoaffective. Um, and it's not going to be, uh, the psychosis is only going to happen while you're having the depressed symptoms. It's not going to happen at other times. Otherwise, we'd probably be looking more at an, a schizoaffective disorder. So screening for this is uh, is a little bit debated. 
but uh, it can't hurt to ask a couple questions about depression. So there's uh, there's the CSD uh, scale that you can use. There's the uh, geriat geriatric depression scale. Uh, one one and two question screening, which just would mean uh, saying, "Are you depressed, or do you feel uh, do you feel uh, depressed most of the time?" Um, a five item geriatric depression scale you can look up, but it uh, it bas asks questions like, "Do you feel like your life is worthwhile?" Uh, so these are s some different depression scales that you can look up to see kind of how depressed somebody is and whether or not they're depressed. <coughs> but the uh, the one question of uh, do you feel depressed most of the time can uh, can be a pretty quick way to get a lot of the same effect. And then if if they answer no, but you're still suspicious, then you might go into a, a more in depth screening. So the way we treat this is uh, with uh, lifestyle uh, advice and disease education is, is one of the first things that we do. Um, so lifestyle advice includes, you know, a uh, healthy lifestyle, get a job, exercise, um, those type of things, do things that make you happy. Um, but the first line for for treatment of uh, depression without severe symptoms would be uh, either psychotherapy or uh, antidepressant, uh, usually an SSRI is first line. So uh, these are the people that, uh, in general, we do um, psychotherapy for people who are not uh, severely depressed, meaning that they don't have the severe symptoms like the the severe suicidality where they've maybe attempted suicide or have a distinct plan or with psychosis um, or people who need to be hospitalized. So those people, you don't want to do psychotherapy just by itself. You'll want to add a medication along with it. But for for less severe depression, you can you can do either one of these as a monotherapy, um, or you can do a combination, which studies have shown are most effective to do a combination of psychotherapy and a medication. So the major medications that we use are SSRIs, SNRIs, TCAs. We still teach uh, MO, MAOIs, um, but uh, but nobody really does that except for. Uh, you know, uh, some of your psychiatrists might do that. The ones that I've talked to don't prescribe MAOIs pretty much ever. But uh, up to date suggested that uh, MAO MAOIs might be used with atypical uh, depressions, like you know we talked about with the reverse symptoms. And then there's the atypical ones like Welbutrin and um, my mind just blanked on the other ones, but. The other atypical antipsychotics. We'll do a whole lecture just on um, on antidepressant. Sorry, antidepressant uh, medications. So if there's psychotic f features, then uh, you might want to use an antipsychotic. Mood stabilizers are also used, especially if there's a bipolar element to it. Uh, anxiolytics. In most cases, or a lot of cases, anxiety goes hand in hand with uh, with uh, depression. And St. John's Ward has actually been shown to be uh, just as effective as SSRIs in um, some studies in Europe. We haven't done any studies that quite match that here in the U.S., but but some people suggest that St. John's Ward is actually just as effective. It has some of the same uh, properties. You don't want to use it with an SSRI uh, because you can end up with a serotonin syndrome. But uh, if your patients don't want a, a quote-unquote medication, uh, St. John's wort could be a, a pretty effective option. DHEA or uh, fish oils can uh, also help. As some studies show that there, there's maybe some minimal benefit to 
to using that in depression as well. Psychotherapy, again, we talked about. I mentioned under 18 here because uh, anybody with uh, depression under 18 should have psychotherapy, according to the National Institute of Health. And the one modality of psychotherapy that has been most extensively studied is CBT. From my understanding, most therapists uh, don't just stick to one modality or another. And, you know, they might throw in some CBT and uh, and uh, you know other modalities along with it. But uh, CBT is the one that they've studied ex- uh, most comprehensively. Uh, electroconvulsive therapy is one that a lot of people shy away from, but it's actually supposed to be a pretty effective treatment and pretty benign in terms of of side effects. Uh, I have a patient right now that uh, we're really trying to get to do ECT because she hasn't been able to get any relief with anything else, (coughs) and she's been um, pretty suicidal. But she is really resisting the ECT. It's kind of a scary thing. Um just the thought of it but but really it's a treatment that can be <clears throat> can be pretty effective and and isn't isn't going to give you many bad side effects so uh, definitely consider ECT in in the resistant um, or refractory cases of depression so how long do you treat them uh, at least 6 to 9 months after they've had an, an episode and if you have two two or more episodes, then consider treating for longer periods of time. And in some uh, some people will end up taking antidepressants basically for life, uh, so they can avoid taking a or going into a depressive episode. But most people are going to be off um, after six to nine months, and then and they, if they start to go back into an episode, then they'll start treatment again. Treatment response is around 50 to 60 percent. Uh, some people I've heard say uh, the 30-30-30 rule applies, that it's 30 uh, percent will um, respond strongly to it, uh, respond very well. 30 percent will have uh, minimal response, and 30 percent will will not be effective. I guess that leaves 10 percent. I don't know where, the, where those people go, but uh, maybe we should call it 33-33-33 rule. Uh, psych referral or hospital should be in anybody who's uh, who's again uh, attempted suicide or has a distinct plan for suicide, who has uh, a lot of weight loss or s- extreme physical effects of the disease, any intent to harm others, uh, people with psychotic features, and a lot of times substance abuse is going to be pretty hard for the primary care physician to handle substance abuse along with depression. So we always wanted to consider if there's any underlying medical condition that's causing this. Uh, any of the any of the thyroid disorders can can be a serious cause of depression like syndromes. And on that same note, uh, Medical conditions in general, especially serious ones like cancer and heart disease, stroke, uh, dementia, all of these uh, raise the risk for for um, depression. So, in and in some cases, it may be hard to distinguish where the depression starts and the and the disease ends. But but it, in any cases, a lot of these people will respond to treatment for depression, but if we can uh, treat an underlying medical condition, that might be more effective. I mean, we really want to rule out bipolar because uh, the bipolars are going to treat differently. We're not going to use an SSRI because it's uh, probably going to increase the cycling of of the bipolar, so you get a you get a a faster cycling and a and uh, in general, you'll end up being uh, either manic or depressive more time than you would have been if you didn't treat with the SSRI. Chemical causes like uh, some antihypertensives, beta blockers, uh, uh, calcium channel blockers, um, drugs, alcohol, and OCPs all can have uh, a negative effect on mood um, as well as 
as nicotine. So these these things can contribute to to depression. Adjustment disorder, which is a response to a significant uh, stress that doesn't meet a major depressive order disorder uh, criteria, uh, but has a, a lot of the the symptoms of depression. So really, the only difference here is that there's a major stress in the life, and we don't quite meet uh, major depression. So. So if you have a major stress, but you meet all the criteria for depression, you're still depressed. Bereavement is kind of a similar situation. Dysthymia is, uh, again, not going to meet all the criteria for depression. You don't have enough symptoms. Um, but, uh, but it's just generally a depressed mood, and it lasts at least two years. Minor depression, if we're going to call it major depression, we've got to have a minor depression. And it's kind of a vague term. It just means anything less than uh, less than major depression. But unlike dysthymia, it doesn't have to last for two years. So you can have a minor depressive uh, episode, for example, which is maybe a, a month or two worth of, of, uh, of several, but not not five of the of the SAGI caps criteria so uh, please help uh, help us make these better if you want to volunteer you can uh, type in volunteer at or send us an email at volunteer at worldmedicalschool.org there's lots of stuff that we could uh, use some help with and uh, the major thing is if you want to leave a comment so we know how to make these videos better that would be much appreciated thanks